Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 16th, 2022, could on 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new storm to be forming in the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. We could be seeing a new tropical system, so let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is pretty quiet across the basin, at least for the moment. However, things are starting to pick up across the basin. We had Invest Area 98L across portions of Texas dumped a lot of heavy rainfall as we were talking about and was arguably a tropical depression as it did make landfall. Uh, but either way, this will probably be classified in the post-cyclone uh, report at the end of the year. Uh, we do have a new tropical disturbance right now over portions of Central America and this will be lifting generally towards the north and west over the next couple of days, where after some additional development of this system is certainly possible. And we'll take a look at that here in a moment. And then we also have the intertropical convergence zone beginning to light up across Africa here along the monsoon trough. Multiple tropical waves exiting Africa, and this will be setting the stage for more tropical development coming very shortly. So in the Atlantic Basin today... We have an area of interest down here near Central America, and this will again be lifting northwestward over the next day or two, and then we'll reemerge out into the Bay of Campeche and the southern Gulf of Mexico, where some development to the northwest of Mexico City and southwest of Mon uh, Monterey uh, will be possible here. So again, places even near Corpus Christi, McAllen, and Brownsville, Texas, need to kind of be watching the progress of this system because, yet again, it could at least bring some more heavy rainfall to the area, and certainly portions of Mexico and also Texas need that rain for now. Uh, of course, if we look at the accumulated cyclone energy index through the 12th of August, again, really not much has changed because we've had no cyclones developing, but uh, again, we're sitting at a measly 2.8 ACE units for the season, and that is expected to increase. Again, I think we'll probably end up something more like this, where we start to kind of see that trend, and then it probably falls within about the 50th percentile or so. So when are these tropical systems going to be forming? Well, let's look at the GFS forecast. We're going to first take a look at our area of interest down here in the Bay of Campeche and Gulf of Mexico region because there's a lot of things going on here, a lot of moving parts. So this is the GFS forecast, the 060 run valve for 8 a.m. this morning. We'll go ahead and move this out in time. Now we notice that here is Friday. So by the end of the week, we have a disturbance that has moved all the way from Central America and of course, portions of the Yucatan Peninsula, and now has emerged in the Bay of Campeche. Now, down here, the Bay of Campeche is very notorious for helping cyclones form because of the shape of the coastline. So land interaction actually may be very beneficial here, at least initially. And this actually does try to become a tropical cyclone. We notice that on the GFS forecast, though, it pretty much it spins up really at the last minute as it approaches land. So development of this system is kind of highly dependent on just exactly how much land interaction and how close it gets to that land mass. Now, the GFS upper level wind environment at this time, we notice that if we kind of move this forward in time, it is a little unfavorable. Now, there will be some shear because notice how on the GFS forecast, at least, there is an upper level anti-cyclone, but mainly over portions of coastal Mexico on the East Pacific side. So what this actually does is it creates a little bit of shear from this displaced anti-cyclone and it does create a little bit of a more hostile environment for tropical cyclone formation. Now, storms can still form. Uh, obviously, they, they will be a bit weaker, uh, but this isn't necessarily the most unfavorable look. Now, if we look at the European forecast, the European is a little bit different here. The zero, the zero Z run here, notice how uh, this disturbance moves over land and then it emerges into the Bay of Campeche and Gulf of Mexico, where you actually notice that there is a more well-defined circulation here offshore of southern Texas and portions of coastal Mexico by Saturday morning. This is about 11 a.m. Saturday morning, and we could have a potential storm down here south of Texas, around the, you know, Brownsville, Texas, or around portions of uh, far northern coastal Mexico. 
And on this particular run here, this moves inland just about uh, really about 60, you know, 50 to 60 miles uh, south of Brownsville, Texas. So uh, this is certainly the potential, you know, makings of at least a rainmaker. Again, if we actually look at that relative humidity, we notice that again, there's an increase in relative humidity around portions of coastal Mexico and far southern Texas. So we'll be watching that. The upper level wind environment too isn't going to be all that unfavorable. There actually is a little bit of an upper level anticyclone here developing and it is more positioned in the Gulf of Mexico allowing for additional tropical cyclone formation. So again, bottom line with this is that there could be a potential storm forming somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico by Friday and into the weekend. So portions of coastal Mexico and far southern Texas need to kind of continue to monitor the progress of this system. Now, focusing on the remainder of the tropics for the remainder of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, things are beginning to pick up across the basin. If we look at the European ensembles from the overnight runs here, we notice that, again, there is some ensemble members picking up on that Gulf of Mexico system. So it is something to watch. And then we have this tropical wave coming off within about the next couple of days. This is by uh, 2 a.m. Saturday morning. We have a tropical wave emerging off the coast of Africa. And on this particular run here, this actually doesn't really do much. However, there might be some members that do try to develop this kind of later on as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. And then a new tropical wave comes off after that by about the 24th, 23rd of August. And development chances do begin to increase quite substantially as we head through the 31st of August. We kind of notice that there is kind of a parade of areas of lower pressures suggesting that we could be dealing with multiple tropical cyclones beginning to try to form by the end of August into the month of September. The GFS ensembles from the 60 run as well kind of show much of a similar solution as well. Multiple tropical cyclones coming and a lot of them seem to try to want to develop especially the further west they get and that's kind of what we were talking about earlier in the season. If the MDR isn't especially favorable, we could start to see more development out here in the Caribbean and the Southwest Atlantic. So we're going to have to continue to monitor everything. But again, it seems like that after we deal with this potential system forming near Mexico and Texas, we might have a little bit of a lull. And then it looks like probably by about the 23rd onwards, we could be dealing with a threat for multiple tropical cyclones to form across the basin. So... We'll continue to kind of continue to monitor the progress of that. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.